much. Yeah, it, it's a very interesting company. I really love working there. And I'm just going to share my screen. So uh, tonight I'm going to talk a little bit about building runtime platforms for developers. Uh, but first, hi, my name is Nils, and I'm a principal engineer at Klarna. And we make uh, sh shopping smooth at Klarna. And we aim to become the world's favorite way to shop. And Klarna Engineering is the ones that craft the, the product. And today we are over a thousand engineers split up over 200 teams within Klarna. And I work in a part in Klarna that is called developer service. And our mission is to empower developers to de deliver high quality and secure services with minimal effort. And what this means is that we build tooling services and platforms for developers inside of Klarna to be able to develop, develop and operate services with ease. And the foundation for this in Klarna is something called the Klarna engineering platform. And this is built up by 19 large, larger products and many smaller ones, spanning from build and testing and deployment, uh, and but also in areas like networking, authentication, uh, A-B testing, frameworks and even UI components. And right now we are about 15 teams working with this domain and we have about 100 engineers. And tonight I'm going to talk about runtime platforms, especially for container-based services. And to just get a brief overview how this works is the user will provide an artifact and this something called the service metadata to us. And they use this to prepare the deployment. And this bundles the artifact and configuration into one version unit. And this also gets mirrored out to all the regions that are defined for the service. And when the user actually do a deployment in the system, what it basically does is apply this version bundle to the specific environment that the developer chooses to do it. And then, of course, there are many other things you can do within the platform as well. For instance, you can use experimentation platform, which is an A-B testing tool. But what is right for a small project might not be the right approach when the number of engineers uh, starts to grow. And when the number of teams are really starting to grow, a lot of things starts to change. And this growth, growth will also make good ideas from yesterday not to scale anymore. But even when you are in a situation like this, it's really important to start small and learn fast, but also have a good understanding of what you want to build and achieve. Because the clearer the goal you will have, the easier it will be to evaluate. And one thing that I see is quite often overlooked is that the fastest learning you can do is actually in the design phase. And then iterate on your ideas and learn from them and keep on iterating. And for me, this journey started with CloudFormation. And it enabled us to build infrastructure fairly quickly. And it, it also made it easy to do reproducible infrastructure. And we could trace who made changes. And we also had infrastructure as code. But still, you had to know a lot of details. And code reuse was this difficult. So what we did then was we introduced Troposphere. This is a Python library to generate cloud formation. And this started uh, to, we could uh, increase the code reuse enormously, and the static typing helped us a lot. But we kept on in iterating on this, and we introduced Docker into the mix uh, to give us better flexibility on the deployments. But this also helps developers to build and test their software, of course. But 
we kept on iterating on this to get better code reuse, and we started to build high-level components, uh, also adding build validations, automatic ta tagging, rudimentary compliance controls, and stuff like this. And a lot of these things you might find today in the CDK, but we even had more high-level components than that. And by iterating and paying attention to what you learned from the past, you can move uh, more quickly. But when you start to scale things up to uh, over a thousand engineers, things start to become really interesting. And people's expectations change as well. And they kind of expect you to have organization-wide answers to how to work, for instance. And investing in making things simpler for developers starts to really pay off. But things also becomes harder. For instance, in our platform, communication with our users is a vital part, and security becomes so much more important. But uh, a runtime platform is so much more than container management as well. Of course, the solid core is important, but it's the integrations around the service that truly brings value to the user of the system. And to deliver on this, uh, our platform stands on three pillars. The first is the core plat runtime platform. And this is all about quality, quality of the deployments and the availability and uh, the performance of the services running within the platform. The second part is the integration platform. And here we want to enable contributors to integrate their products into our platform, ranging from the basics of logging and metrics to A-B testing uh, clients or edge protection and other things. And the last thing is uh, the, rapid, the rapid development pillar. And here we are working how to, we can deliver secure, fast, and easy development for our users and how they can do operations easily. And a lot of things there is around best practices, governance, and control, but it's also the UX of the user. And at the heart of this, we have the service interface that describes how service must interact with the platform. And this ranges from how it should be configured, how the service should boot and shut down, and how to do a health check or how the traffic should flow. And this allows us to uh, change the platform without having to risk the interaction with the services running within it. And if we look a little bit closer, uh, how we build this up is that to the left, you have the control plane, uh, which controls everything. And it has an API. And underneath this, we have a, the control plane logic that we can run in multiple versions. And this is mainly built up with step functions and lambdas, actually. And this allows us to do, for instance, test runs of a new versions uh, in the system before we switch over to that new version. Where, so at that point, we can have deployments running in both versions at the same time. And then it has a layer of common control plane infrastructure. And then in other AWS accounts, we have our platforms where the services actually are running. And to be able to communicate with the control plane, it has a small co common infrastructure that we provision out to that one. And then the control plane can provision uh, for ECS clusters and the service infrastructure that is needed. But container management is kind of a, starting to become a commodity, but security at scale is not, at least not yet. And we spend a lot of time there. And the key for us is to be able to balance control and enablement. And especially in a banking environment, this becomes much more important. And for us, what we are seeing, the most important feature we have is to be able to roll out new improved ways of working. And many times our most valued features are connected to things like security and compliance, auditing and governance. 
and be able to introduce these auxiliary products uh, around the services this is what we can utilize to drive change within the company and for us our motto is that it should be easy to do the right thing uh, thank you very much and i hope we have some questions as well from the audience that is fantastic approach blue green is great in terms of velocity i personally prefer radical incremental immutable ephemeral labels type into good luck that's, yeah that's the the approach with the deployments there in our platform is really great and it's it's also great that we can provide really nice blue green uh, deployments to our users running within the platform as well yeah so i think uh thanks a lot uh thanks a lot niels uh uh really great uh talk and i love you know the the kind of you know ecosystem for for engineers that you create because i think it's uh uh, it's also something that I believe in a lot of big companies starts to be the ob obstacle uh, and something that's slowing people down. And I think the the team that that you're part of um, is something that uh, that just continues to make it a great environment for engineers to to work. Right? Yes, and also I, I really enjoy the developing for developers as well, because you are so close to your users and you have very good and direct feedback as well. Yeah, yeah, I think you know that that's an amazing uh, mentality. So so thanks a lot for that uh, presentation. Mm -hmm.